frames for that matter, and just move them around. So that's on for four frames. That is a bit too short, so I'm gonna edit undo and bring it back to a six frame antic. Okay, so that's uh, your basics right there of how to set your tweens. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just create some tweens in between here. Uh, the same thing here, just set it to motion. And the first thing you're gonna notice is all of this stuff going wonky on me. And the reason for that is because this symbol here on the arm and this one here are flopped. They're different drawings. If I actually go into the to the double click into the arm symbol, you'll notice I have two different drawings. Uh, this is my first pose here, and this arm was for my second pose. So it's the arms and the legs here are actually going to have to be redrawn. Uh, they're not, never going to tweak for me. So I'm going to go in anyways. I noticed on CS4 there's a bit of a problem doing the tween. It affects if I do a motion tween during this in between here. What's going to happen in Flash CS4 is it's going to affect this final arm. This arm will end up something like that down there, and this one might be moved around a little bit. So I think it's just a glitch on CS4. I've never run into this problem on any older versions. So. Uh, the best thing to do in the situation is just to grab the parts that you're actually going to tween, which is are just these three parts here for me, and just click on them to find out which layer they're sitting on. Uh, you'll notice they're highlighted in black there, so I'm going to go and grab those layers, and I'm going to set 100% ease out, which means it's favoring into my my next keyframe there. Same thing with the stomach there. All right, so now I've got everything that I can possibly tween done. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to put this guy on twos now. And in Flash, if you if you're putting something back on twos, you have to start from the right of the keyframe and move over to the left. If you start from the left and start keying out this way, you're going to lose your ease. So I'm just grabbing the arrow keys above the spacebar there and and going to hit left twice and just keep doing that over and over and breaking this animation down onto twos. Same thing in the middle here, I'm just going to create a new set of keyframes. And I'm just going to highlight all of my motion tweens there, and I can right click and just hit remove. Okay, I can't do that in this version of Flash, so I'm just going to go highlight my tweens and just go tween none, and that'll get rid of it. And now it just gives it a little more of a traditional feel breaking it down onto twos uh, doesn't feel as as flashy anymore so this is what I have so far um, really doesn't contain many principles of traditional animation there's no overlap in action so I'm gonna go back into this little animation I've done and just sort of tweak all that stuff now and, and add some secondary action and that sort of thing. And the first thing I want to do is draw my in-betweens. So these arms aren't working for me. I basically have no use for these arms or legs anymore. So I'm just going to delete those, get rid of those. And right down here, you'll notice a little two icon of two squares, and that's your onion skin. So what that does is it lets you see the drawings previous and after. Um, kind of you can pull it over and it'll let you see your the keyframes outside of it. These little two little dots here. You pull that one over and pull this side over. And now I can have a better view of my arms, the two drawings of my arms. So I'm basically just gonna draw out some new arms here. Just zoom in. I'm gonna close my properties window to give me a bigger working area so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna use my line tool. For this character I've set all the, the line weights to ten. So I'm just gonna make sure I have the line weight set before I start here. And I want to favor this higher position on the arm, so I'm just if you notice that you start a line and it gets grouped automatically, it's because this little symbol here is on, so I'm just gonna unclick that so that doesn't happen to me anymore. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a curve to this arm. Just give it a nice kind of overlapping feel. I'm gonna turn my magnet back on so that the line will snap right to the point there. 
and just try and maintain my volumes the best I can just by looking at it. Okay, so I'm going to move this arm up here and that's looking pretty good, maybe a bit thick up in here so I can just pull that line manipulated a little bit more. And now I'm just going to form a group out of this arm just so I can have an organized area to work in. Uh, so Control G will form a new group and I'm going to double click inside of that. And I'm just going to close off my line here so I can paint inside that arm. Um, I don't have any colors saved yet from this character so I just want to go back out and find that blue area. I'm going to take my onion skin off. And if I double click into this guy it br breaks it down into the raw paint so I'm going to use my eye here, the hotkey for that is I, and just click anywhere, anywhere inside the blue. And what that's going to do is it's going to save that color for me down in my in my paint window. All right, so I'm going to click back in that arm there and just add some paint, drop some paint in that arm, and I'm holding down Alt to start a new point on this paint so I can drag it over so that we don't see the line going through there. And I've got a new arm here that's not too bad and it's maybe looking a little bit long so I can just take it and skew it back in uh, turn my onion skin back on so I can see see it a little better and I'm gonna go and take this hand down here and line it back up with the arm maybe I'll skew it down give it a little bit of a little bit of drag if you really wanted to go all out you could draw all new hands but I'm just giving you the basic runaround for now and same thing with the legs. I'm going to add my in between of the legs. It doesn't really matter what layer I'm on because I'm not going to do any more tweening. I'm finished with that at this point. So right here you'll notice I can see this line here. Um, that's my leg in the second pose and this is the inside line of my leg in the first pose. Same thing outside line here and you've got the outside line here. So I'm just going to do in between uh, favoring the final position of that leg and start my first line I'm going to select it and then hit Control G to make a group. I'm just going to work inside of this group here. It's a little more organized. So I'm favoring the final join a little bit more than doing an exact in between here. I'm just going to make sure that that leg lines up to the outside body line. Same thing, I'm going to close it off here. Um, hit K, my hotkey for the paint bucket. Drop some paint inside the leg, get rid of that line hold down alt to make a new point on the paint line and just drag it up there a little bit so now you'll notice I've got my new leg drawn uh, the in-between of its working okay for me and I haven't done anything with the feet uh, you can add a, a bit of squash to them if you really want but for this simple demonstration I'm not going to bother so I've got my hotkeys set um, to modify to move something, flip it from one side to the other. You have to go modify, transform, uh, flip either vertically or horizontally. Uh, it's not a default set for your hotkeys, so you may want to may want to default that. And to do that, you just go up to Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, and you can make some of your own shortcuts in here. And I find that's one I use a lot, so. So yeah, I've basically I'll turn my end skin back on and you can see I've got that in between and this arm. So I can pretty much reuse this arm on the other side over here. So what I'm going to do is just copy that arm, control C and then control V to paste it. And then modify, transform, flip horizontally. And that puts it on the other side for me. So I'm just going to put it in place, uh, drag it as close as I can. And then use my arrow keys just to nudge it that extra little bit to get it perfectly in place. So I've got my in-between drawn. I'm going to do the same thing with the leg there. Just copy it, paste it, control C, control V, uh, modify, transform, flip horizontally, and just get that leg lined up on the other side here. You may have to skew it a little bit to get it in place or change the, change the shape slightly. Uh, if you got to a point where you've skewed it and you can't really move it anymore, let's say it was something like this, and and your line is matching up, you can simply, because it's just a group, even if it was a symbol, you can just break it apart because you're not going to reuse this symbol anymore. So Control-B to break apart a symbol or a group. 
And then I can just bring that up and match up the lines as best as I can here. Same thing with this one that's a little bit off, so I'm just going to match it up a little bit better. So now it's I've got my legs and arms in between, so I've got the basic action of this guy animating. Um, so that's about as simple as it gets. I mean, at this point I can go in to the, the head symbol here. And I'll show you my new face changes on frame 21. So if I double click inside the head, you'll see I have my timeline here and then it just pops into this new pose. So I can do things like um, add an eye blink going into the antic. Maybe close his eyes. I might want to just drop him down. So if I look here, final antic poses on 17. So I might say I want his eyes closed by frame 15. So I'll double click into the head comp and make a new set of keyframes on 15. And then I'm just going to get rid of these eyes completely. Or actually, easier thing to do would be double click inside the eye and create a new a new keyframe inside blank keyframe and redraw that eye. So just gonna 